Hi team, uh, welcome to 10 Talks. Today's conversation is all about you and Dr. Hunter is joining us to really tell us about what is it about our gut health and sleep? How do we set us up for peak performance? And when we talk about peak performance, it's really about you being set up in your life to win your day. Really, how are you sleeping? How are you eating? How is your body responding to the stress that's in your life? What's going on inside of you so that you're actually set up to be strong, to be clear-minded and able to peak perform in whatever you're doing at work, in your life, with your children, with your relationships. So what's interesting about today is we're going to start with sleep, which we found is the number one indicator for peak performance is that how you're sleeping is going to set up pretty much everything that you're able to do or not do. And the really powerful component of this is that you are in control of. So, so many times we talk about things where you're like, yeah, but this, or if somebody would do this, or my boss, or, and you feel as if everything that you need for your peak performance is out of your control. Well, new thinking today is all about sleep, gut health, and you're in control. So Dr. Hunter, thank you so much for setting us up really with winning strategies, just the value of, and the power of sleep. Absolutely. I love teaching people about sleep and helping them improve their sleep. As you said, if you're not sleeping well, you're probably not doing much else well in life, right? We know that it's so much easier to reach for the comfort foods when you're down on sleep. So in lifestyle medicine, we really think of a healthy quantity of sleep is seven to nine hours a night, ideally all together or very minimally interrupted um, and really waking up feeling refreshed after that seven to nine hours. And one of the really interesting things about sleep and the microbiome is that when we look at duration of sleep, it directly impacts the makeup of the microbiome. Hmm, interesting. So explain that. How does that have an effect on our actual gut, gut lining, everything that's happening? Sleep is such a connector in everything that we do. Right. And when we think about the pillars of lifestyle medicine, remember, they're really hard to separate out and the microbiome is probably right there at the center. And really what the studies have shown of the effect of poor sleep on the microbiome is decreasing that biodiversity that we've talked about so many times, right? That beautiful tropical rainforest of all those different teammates working together and everybody's got their role to play. Well, when you're not getting healthy sleep, when you're getting short duration sleep under seven hours, or your sleep is really disrupted, um, that tends to shrink the habitat, right? That we have less of those critters and those different species in there. And usually it's some of the bad actors that are getting predominated. So, and we know how, that when the microbiome is off balance, it does affect that gut lining. It does affect our immune system. So think about when do you get sick? right? At the end of a busy season at work, when you haven't been sleeping and you've been reaching for the fast and convenient foods and you're not taking care of your physical health and activity, that's when our immune system goes down. And we know how tightly connected that is with the microbiome as well. Um, we see increased inflammation, right? If the microbiome is not in its peak performance with all the team members doing their job. So that's been a really interesting finding from the studies is when you're not in that seven to nine hour range, the diversity goes down and the opposite end of the studies, when you are getting seven hours of sleep and more, we really see an increase in the biodiversity in the microbiome. So it's, it's really functioning well as a, that peak performance ecosystem, if we will, that we really want to have. So if I'm not able to get my seven to nine hours sleep, just due to stress for whatever's happening or just a disruptful night, what are some foods or what are some ways to set my system up for success knowing that I'm at a deficit, I you know, didn't have a great night's sleep, and I'm still committed to really winning my day? Yeah, I would focus on hydration, number one, right? Getting your water in. Hydration status is another indicator of peak performance, right? Maybe a, a big part of that. So whether it's on the field or just in our day-to-day -day lives. So, you know, you may have the tendency to want to grab the caffeine 
to boost you up and sure have that first eye opener but then let's shift to how can we get some water in throughout the day we know that our water intake is really important for the health of the microbiome as well you're also probably going to make healthier food choices if you're not hangry you know water helps you um, really feel like you're not at that edge and then it's also going to be like while we might have the craving for the easy fix or the donut that's right there really focusing on how do we continue in our journey with good nutrition and add in some fruits and veg get those whole grains right that's going to support you and boost you and also take care of the microbiome which is probably also hurting from the lack of sleep and then you know a lot of people will have a slump in the afternoon especially if they haven't had that good sleep at night that's the perfect time to go take a walk yeah. right instead of get in bed and take a nap. And sometimes you might really need that, right? If it's been a really stressful period, giving yourself time to catch up on sleep is okay. Napping, we wanna limit to 20 to 30 minutes if we do it. Otherwise it's gonna impact your sleep tonight, right? So using the opportunity to get some body movement instead, ideally outside in the sunshine, if you can, um, that's gonna help reset your circadian rhythm. It's going to uh, take care of your mental health a little bit, clear your head, even 10 minutes. You know, we've talked about the power of 10 before with exercise. That 10 minute little exercise snack is going to boost your mood. It's going to rev you back up and keep you going. So you're not reaching again for a soda or the coffee or something to get out of that three o'clock slump. And we've talked about this with sleep before. Sleep is really a 24 hour cycle, right? So it's not just the seven to nine hours overnight. It's what we do in between those hours that adds up to good sleep or poor sleep. So again, if you're gonna take a nap and you sleep for two hours, it's gonna really shift your cycle further back. One of the things we know about the microbiome is those critters in our gut are actually on the same circadian rhythm that we should be on. They really like to do the work of digesting our food when the sun is highest in the sky. They don't really rest, you know, bacteria don't sleep, but there's so many other secondary processes that happen overnight in the microbiome when it's not actively digesting that are so important for our health overall. The, you know, fermentation of our fiber, the creation of those short chain fatty acids we've talked about, that really prioritizing um, not eating late, right? Not uh, dinner as early as possible is kind of my recommendation, at least three hours between your last calories and, and bedtime, that really sets you up for success for the microbiome, right? Taking care of those critters. So I want to be able to set us up to win the day from a sleep perspective. I want to start from the minute we wake up and take us through really what is our peak performance daily ritual and routine, our schedule, how do we really own really every hour and every choice? So we wake up, usually the first thing we reach for is a bit of caffeine just to get everything going. I know that reaching for water is a huge winning strategy. Take us through, I'm awake, how do I win the day in my choices? Yeah, so when you are thinking about caffeine, probably first thing in the morning, is the best choice, right? We know it actually can take up to six hours for caffeine to be metabolized. So that's why the 2 p.m. coffee or soda for a lot of us really hurts us on the sleep side of things, right? So actually the, the coffee at 8 a.m. is still a third of a cup of coffee almost by 8 or 10 p.m., right? Because it, it's not fully metabolized. So yeah, starting with that little cup in the morning, our little morning ritual, having that and feeling cozy, that's okay, but I would just avoid caffeine later on as we think about this 24 hour cycle of sleep. Um, and you know, as you go through your day, you want to build in some strategies that are going to support good sleep health. So I really like a little bit of uh, downtime and me time in the morning where I have some time for journaling or quiet reflection. Getting your exercise done early will also benefit you. You know, you've probably heard like you shouldn't work out right before bed. Have you heard that recommendation before? Yeah. yeah. So we know that up until about an hour before your ideal bedtime, it's still okay to be active, but you want to think about being lightly to moderately active. If you have a really heavy workout session or really hard cardio, what that does is it actually increases your core body temperature. And we've talked before, like sleep and falling asleep is this really intricate process where the core body temperature has to drop. So that's really where that recommendation of avoiding intense exercise before bed comes from. Because if you're really hot 
and sweaty, you know, it's going to take that much more for your body to cool down and have that core body temperature drop. So sleep can be initiated. But really thinking about even a light walk after dinner or something like that is not going to impact your sleep for that night. And we know that having daily exercise um, is very important, even if it's not scheduled exercise, just movement and body movement throughout the day, very important for sleep. It's this idea of what we call sleep drive. So when we think about this idea of sleep drive, it's just like you wouldn't drive your car to the gas station and try to fill it up if the gas tank was full. So we actually have to expend energy throughout the day to be ready for sleep. So, um, so building in the, those exercise snacks, building in your time for daily movement is really important for kind of being sleepy enough to fall asleep at night. And, you know, we also think about the things we're putting in our body, right? Highly processed foods, sugar, especially late in the evening can impact your sleep. One thing I like to think about is our alcohol intake. Um, you know, really same with separating your dinner time and your last meal from bedtime by several hours. You want to think about that for alcohol as well, um, because it takes probably about three hours before bed is what we would recommend for your last alcohol beverage of the night. And again, in lifestyle medicine, less is more with that. Um, but that's because alcohol, while it might make you feel sleepy, it actually impacts your late night sleep if you're still kind of processing through that during your sleep cycle. So that interrupts your REM sleep, which is where we dream. So important for kind of detoxing from the day. Our brain is processing everything that's happened. We're storing memories. There's a lot of uh, really regeneration that's happening during that time. So we want to try to preserve that sleep as best we can. So in terms of being able to win our day and actually be tired enough to go to sleep in a, in a way that is really about rest and recovery and getting us ready for the next day, I do want to talk about the emotional management as just our day in terms of really living on purpose, living our 10 life, investing our time and things that matter to us. How does the emotion of how we're feeling, whether we're angry at the people that are in our home or in a relationship or, you know, the things that we churn about and think about and we're not able to go to sleep because we're kind of wrestling with whatever we're living through during the day. How does that affect us? Yeah, absolutely. Stress management and kind of making sure you have time in the evenings to wind down is a really important strategy for good sleep at night. So you know, really trying to avoid stimulating activities right before bed. So whether it's a phone call with a family member who might kind of set you off or watching the news, I mean, I think that's a very stressful event sometimes. Um, so really kind of choosing activities that are going to set you up for kind of that rest and relax phase of the evening. When we think about kind of the things we do every day that help us promote good sleep, some of it is this idea of what we call sleep hygiene. So just like you brush your teeth on a routine basis, there are tools we can use to really help our brains understand the ritual of what's coming next is healthy sleep, right? So um, part of that is some things that we should avoid in the evenings. We've already talked about the alcohol and the caffeine, not keeping that too close to bedtime, having dinner be earlier. But also the screens, mm -hmm. the ever present, you know, shiny box of the television, your phones, the tablets, the light from those tablets and those screens really goes into your brain and it simulates sunlight. So it tells your brain, hey, don't make melatonin. The sun is up. We need to be awake. So if you have a real hard time sleeping, you may need even more time than this. But for the average person, 30 minutes of screen free time in the evenings really sets you up for being able to really wind down and go to sleep when you want to. And so for a lot of people, I say, great, you got to turn the TV off 30 minutes earlier. And now you get to create that calming bedtime routine for yourself. So what does that look like for you, right? What is your favorite stress management tool? It could be taking a hot shower. That's also helpful for dropping the core body temperature. Um, Things like yoga and stretching have also been shown to help promote sleep. If you are kind of on that high level stress, it's been a really hard time at work or there's something you're dealing with, taking some time to journal. Yeah. Um, for some people I say, you know, write down your worries, make your worry list. Or if 
life is challenging and there's a lot going on, get your to-dos in order for the next day. Because part of the time when we're trying to sleep and our brain is on the treadmill, is the way one of my uh, patients described it, it's because your brain's trying to make sure you've got it all together, yeah. right? They're, yeah. It's trying to keep you safe. And so if you can like say, hey brain, I got it. Look, I got, I've got all my to-dos there on paper. I wrote down all the things I'm worried about. You don't have to keep reminding me that it's a, it's actually a way for your brain to be like, okay, she's got this. I'm, I'm cool. I can chill out. So the more you can kind of get that set up again, it creates the habit to our brain that all of these cues, like, okay, the, the screen is off. The hot shower's done. I've done my stretching. I'm journaling. Gosh, I'm feeling tired. It's time to get into bed. And Another thing that can be really helpful for us is keeping a set bedtime and a set wake up time. Um, you can kind of move backwards if you need to, like I've got to be out of bed at six. So if I want mm -hmm. seven to nine hours, what does that mean as far as when I get into bed? So if you want to make sure you get seven to nine hours at night, you might have to start from when you need to wake up, right? Most of us have to get up at a certain time to do the things we need to do and get to work and fulfill our life duties. So if it's 6 a.m., make sure you're getting into bed early enough to get that time. And we know that sticking to that bedtime and wake up time, kind of no matter if it's the weekend, um, really sets you up for success because again, your body's in more of a habit about what I do between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m is get good rest. Well, I just really value training for our sleep to win our sleep as intentionally as we train for everything else in life. And we know that rest and recovery is so, so important. And so when we have our rituals and routines, they're telling our brain, hey, this is what we do. And it can actually invest in doing it and also invest that brain power in doing something at a next level. And so being able to know, oh, I, you know, I don't have to think about making my coffee. I already know how to do that. So now while I'm drinking my coffee, I can do something. It's my time to journal or it's my time to think about it. A lot of times when we talk about rituals and routines, people think about, I don't want to be boring. I want to be spontaneous. I kind of want to just do whatever. Well, that means your body is kind of on standby for what are we doing now? What's happening? And it's not able to be in that peak performance state of, I know what's happening. I know what I'm eating. I know why I'm eating it. I know what time I'm going to bed. I know what, what's coming so that I can actually invest my energy in that peak performance component. So, so many times we have great intentions of, okay, I'm definitely going to go to bed early tonight, or, you know, I'm going to get up early and we've really got our mindset in the right place and then life shows up and we get a phone from somebody later and that really gets us worked up or just from a bad habit perspective we get a little bored and we think oh I think I'll check my emails really quick all of that is really so detrimental to us being able to set into that routine so the more that we can have our morning routine have our professional day, go to work, be intentional. We love to say be where our feet are so that we're really grounded. You know, when you're working, be working and use your brain power so that you're, you're tired at night. Go ahead, go for it. Really in sports, we say, leave it all on the court or all on the field. Like you want to feel like at the end of the day, you got nothing, nothing because it's not because you're so stressed out. It's more because you've really played your best game today. Every day is a day we never get back. We never get these moments back. We never get these choices back. And just raising your awareness to the fact that the choices you make, the people you talk with, the people you choose not to talk with, the energy, the mindset, the self-talk, it's actually helping you win or not. It's really that simple. So we want to be able to empower you to really own your day, own your choices, so when you're at work, be fully engaged, be playing hard, win work. And when you come home, have that ritual and routine of transitioning from work into your personal life. It's where you want to have, you know, a great dinner or some conversation with a partner, a glass of wine. It's relatively the beginning of the evening. Take a walk, be able then to have no screen time for about 30 minutes, process whatever you need to. Pay attention if there's a point where you kind of reach back into your work day and you, or even mentally, you kind of go back and think about it. You're resetting yourself back in your professional space. 
rather than having these clear divisions of your personal life, your professional life, and then your personal life again at the end of the day. So we wanna get you coached up on how you're gonna be able to really have this sleep scoreboard. And it's all about how do you determine, am I making the choices, setting up the evening ritual and routine, the morning ritual and routine, and what's my stat on it? So you know our tool is a stat system on a scale of one to 10. One is low, 10 is fabulous. We want us in that eight, nine, or 10 zone. 10 is not perfect. 10 is about what wins for you, how you feel rested and recovered and ready for the new day. And so with every choice you make from the minute you wake up, you can say on a scale of one to 10, do I feel rested? That's an eight to 10 zone is that I'm rested when I wake up. Then you move into your morning routine on a scale of one to 10, stat it up. If you notice that as soon as you get to work after lunch, your stats really drop, we can look at, well, what's going on there? What are you eating? What's happening? Do you not have anything to look forward to in the afternoon? How do we set these intentions so that there's purpose behind what you're doing? Come home, have a meal, be conscious of your gut health and your choices and Think about now it's actually about winning your sleep and what are you doing from the time you get home until the time you go to bed to really get yourself in that eight, nine or 10 zone. Dr. Hunter, what are you recommending as really our checklist that we can go through to make sure that we're in that eight to 10 zone? Yeah, so I would, I would bring it back to we're avoiding the screens. We have a quiet, calming, peaceful bedtime routine whatever that looks like for you. And then we're getting into bed at the same time. One thing we didn't talk about before is that the environment of your bedroom is really important. Sometimes people spend a lot of time in their bed and in their bedrooms not sleeping. So it's important to reserve your bedroom for sleep and intimacy so that when you do go in there, your brain knows what's gonna happen, right? So if that's possible for you, some people, you know, they live in a studio apartment, you know, maybe their bed is their only space, trying to spend as much time doing non-sleep activities elsewhere. Um, and having a cool, quiet, and dark bedroom is really important for consistent sleep at night, right? Our brains are trained to hear that twig snack in the, in the middle of the night and jolt us awake because that's a survival skill. Um, and we're very sensitive to light, even during sleep. So if you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, turning on the overhead light is enough to stimulate your cortisol to spike because we think it's, you know, our brains think it's daytime. So keeping it dim when you're up and around in the evening and just making sure the bedroom is cool. Again, the core body temperature has to drop 68 degrees is kind of what's anticipated. But again, whatever works for you. You know, if you're not having trouble sleeping and your bedroom temperature is different than that, you don't have to make that change. But these are things that are going to set you up for winning a full night of sleep. And sometimes we have to think about who else is in the bedroom with us, right? You got pets or kiddos or a partner who snores, you know, really having, eliminating distractions as much as you can is an important tool, especially if you're struggling with difficulty staying asleep all night or falling asleep. So we've done all of this. We feel really confident about everything that we're empowered to be able to do. And we wake up in the middle of the night and we can't go back to sleep. What's happening? What's going on in our body? What do we do? So my biggest tip for waking up in the middle of the night, and it could be for many reasons, right? You're, you're anxious. Sometimes you just get up to go to the bathroom and then your brain kicks on. Um, one would be to go back to bed, focus on your breath, right? Our, our focusing on our, our breathing is really soothing to our nervous system, especially those intentional inhales and exhales, expanding your chest cavity. And if you have that busy brain, giving it a task while you're focusing on your breath keeps it off the hamster wheel. So teach people to count their breath. It's kind of like counting sheep, but if you silently count in your head, one, when you inhale, two, when you exhale, three, when you inhale, it gives the brain a task and you really are being where your feet are, right? Relaxed in bed, focusing on your breathing. That can be a really good strategy for falling asleep again. Um, 
one of the things as we talked about trying not to spend time in bed when you're not asleep is that if you've been awake in bed for 20 or 30 minutes, the best thing you can do to serve yourself for getting back to sleep is to actually get up out of bed. Because you don't want to create the habit and ritual for yourself that what you do in bed between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. is lay there awake, right? Your, our brain will get trained to that pretty easily. So this is one of our biggest um, impacts that we can make is leaving the bedroom. This is not an excuse to check your work email. This is not, I'm going to go unload the dishwasher. This is, I'm going to go somewhere dim and comfortable and try to go back to sleep like a couch. Maybe you would might read a paperback book with a dim light, you know, something that's going to just be calming. When you start to feel sleepy, that's when you go back to your bed. And what about listening to music or, you know, we have so many apps that are calm yeah. apps and things like that. Is that good that we have somewhat of a conversation going while we're sleeping? So certainly, you know, uh, white noise is an important tool for sleep, especially if they there are some of those noise distractions around. It kind of helps your brain drown out the rest of that. So whether that's falling rain or, you know, ocean music, just a box fan going, it's very steady, very continuous background noise. Those can be really helpful tools. Certainly if you're having a hard time falling asleep, I fall asleep almost every night to a guided meditation. They're great tools as well, right? Walks you through a body relaxation. Um, some breathing components. And that's fine to turn one of those on in the middle of the night if you're trying to fall back asleep. Any tools that you already know are helpful to you when you're trying to get some rest are good things to come in. Uh, one of the kind of problems with falling asleep with some audio or something in the background is when it turns off, is that going to be enough to kind of jar you awake? Um, so making sure the volume's down, there's no ads that are going to pop up and start blaring. Um, but lots of resources for that. Yeah. And what's just the cycle that we need to be going through to really know that we've hit that eight to 10 stat. And I know feeling rested, but I just, from the science perspective, the minute we go to sleep, take us through what's happening in that seven hours. Yeah. The sleep cycles are really interesting. So we rotate between light sleep and deep sleep multiple times through the night. Our sleep cycles are about 90 minutes long. And um, we actually spend a lot of our time in this kind of like pretty light sleep. Now that REM sleep that we were talking about earlier, which is really the deep sleep when you're dreaming, that tends to happen later in the night. So probably between that 1 and 4 a.m. time frame, it's really about, you know, five to six hours into sleep. So if you're getting really short duration sleep, your body does not have enough time to get into that part of the sleep cycle. So you're missing out on that really restorative, you know, kind of mental detox part of our sleep cycle. And you may just be hovering in and out of this light sleep. So that's a reason why you might not feel rested. Okay, team, it's up to you to go out and really be able to win your sleep and be able to be empowered with these new tools, this new thinking, new skills. Hopefully you have lots of new hope that what you do in the day, go ahead, empty out, be exhausted. That's a good thing. That means that you have really emptied out and won your day. Enjoy that evening time where you're really unwinding, you're resting, you're recovering, and you're choosing to turn the screens off 30 minutes before, read a good book, do something that really is just letting you honor you. It's a great time for self-care, for really whatever is important to you. That sets you up to go to bed satisfied. You've, you've had a good day. You've thought about it. You've kind of got your to-do list out of the way. And now it's time for you to honor your body. Kind of you do your part by resting and you let your body do the same. And we know from a gut health perspective, they need to be able, your gut needs time to rest and recover as well. So think about all the components, winning our sleep and winning our gut health starts with all of our choices. And we are on your support team as you stat this up on a scale of one to 10, really going for all of your choices, getting you in that eight to 10 zone. Dr. Hunter, thank you for being on our support team, really coaching us up about the power of gut health and sleep. Thank you, great to be here.